Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about data interpretation which is a classification of measurement and data questions. In particular we're looking at the topic called diagrams. So before we get into it let's read a brief description about what diagram related questions can involve. Diagram questions need you to interpret an illustration. They usually involve solving the value of an interval to answer the question. As illustrations can be varied, it is usually easy to interpret logically. It is good to understand basic concepts such as number lines, mass scales, rulers, etc. More complex questions may use diagrams from which we need to infer the required information or use a scale most appropriate for the context of the question. Okay, so diagram related questions can vary quite a lot. As you can imagine, it really depends on what diagram we encounter and that will basically dictate how the question will go. So for these questions, it's always important to note that we really need to learn the skill of obtaining all of the important information, even if the information is in the form of a diagram. So that includes reading anything and everything it gives you. So typically, data interpretation diagram questions will follow or focus around things that can be measured. So for example, uh, number lines, rulers, and mass scales are all quite common things you may encounter for these diagrams. So that means looking at the value of the interval, as said in the description, is what helps us quite a fair bit. So these um, these diagrams will have a variety of different intervals. So for example, we could look at questions with capacity. So we might have a bottle or a cup or something, and they'll have these little increments on the side. And more often than not, uh, not all of these increments will have numbers next to them. And that's just because it's usually physically impossible to have numbers next to every single thing here because it just takes up too much space. So what's conventionally used is that some of these lines will be a bit longer and those will be the lines with numbers next to them. So just for example, it might look like this. And we need to read the diagram and realize that because of the intervals that are placed between the known values, we can then use that information to calculate what these intervals are individually worth. And then we can work out how much liquid is in the volume of container. So that's mostly for things like capacity, but we can also have scales. So we could have maybe not an electronic scale, but maybe a more old fashioned one where there's a something on the scale and it tells you to work out how heavy it is. So we need to look again at the different increments that they give us and figure out what each of these increments are based off the information provided in the diagram alone. So another thing I can quickly think of is that maybe rulers are also another thing with increments that we may encounter. So really, as long as we derive the information from the diagram itself, these questions again are fairly straightforward. Only things that I would mention as being noteworthy would be to always pay attention to the units that are used in these diagrams. Sometimes these are given as milliliters, but the answer wants the answer in liters, and then you need to do your conversions. Maybe some, maybe there's multiple of these scales, and one scale is in kilograms, but the other is in milli milligrams or something like that, and we are going to again do conversions. Always, always take note of units whenever you encounter them in questions because they become very easy spots to make mistakes in. So other than that, that should be enough information to try out all of the things we learned in this example question. So in this question, it says this cup is currently three quarters full. How much more soda is required for the cup to be full? 
Okay, so the only thing we're told is how much water is in this cup. And so we want to know how much it needs to get fill, fully filled up. So to do that, we're going to need to take a close look at the increments provided in the diagram to figure out what the full capacity is. So here we see that, like we talked about, not every single one of these increments have a number next to them. So we need to use the information in the diagram to figure out what the increments are equal to. So for example, if we take a look at this, these two increments, 1,800, there are one, two, three, four increments in between. Uh, 1000 to 800. So the difference between those two values gives us 200 milliliters. I assume this is uh, in millimeters since that makes the most sense. And so we can then figure out what one increment is by dividing this by four. So one increment one increment has been uh, made by using the initial ratio by four. So one increment has to equal 200 divided by four, which is equal to 50 milliliters. So that means every one of these lines has to equal to 50 milliliters. So this would be 1050. This would be 1000. 100. So that is the last increment in this cup. So that must be how full it can get at full capacity. So if we have the full capacity of this cup as being 1,100 milliliters, we can then carry out the question to full. We are told that the cup is currently three quarters full. So let's figure that out. 1,100 times by three over four, four goes into this number 225 times. 225 times by three gives us 825 milliliters. So that's the amount of water or whatever it is currently in the cup. And to reach full capacity, we need this much more water. So let's figure out the difference. 1100 minus 825 gives us 275 milliliters left to become full. So the correct response would be option B. Okay, so through that question, we saw how important it was to gather all the important information in the question. And that included sources from both the question itself and from the diagram. So reading the increments and converting that into a number was what was most helpful for this question. Thankfully, that is some techniques that you can carry with you for future diagram related questions. Thank you everyone so much for listening.